So we'll just talk about this non-ideal IV characteristics of the MOSFET. And I just want to quickly show what are the non-ideal characteristics that we are going to discuss. So there is a couple of uh, topics. And this non-ideal IV characteristics effects comes into picture only when we discuss about a channel length that is less than one micrometer. But when you consider a channel length that is more than one micrometer, maybe the channel length modulation uh, effect would be there, but not all other effects would be uh, taken into account here. So whenever the technology that we are choosing is less than one micrometer technology, then all of these secondary effects will come into picture. Okay. The very first secondary effect that we are going to discuss would be like velocity saturation effect. And the next one would be the mobility degradation. And the, the third one, which we have already discussed, which is nothing but the channel and modulation, but still I will just uh, revisit this to particular topic. And then the body effect, obviously, you know, what is body effect? There is some relation with respect to the body effect with the threshold voltage of the device. Okay. We'll talk about that. And there is also something known as short channel effect. And this short channel effect is again related to the threshold voltage. Okay. And there is something known as DIBL or drain induced barrier lowering, which is again related to the threshold voltage. So if you just see the body effect, the short channel effect, the drain induced barrier lowering, or in shorter form, it is known as DIBL effect. So all of these three effects are in general related to the threshold voltage. Apart from this, we also have something known as sub threshold conduction, even though it is related to threshold voltage, uh, the phenomena is more related to the current flow. Okay. So that's why I'm not included under the threshold voltage topic, but it's a, it's a kind of separate sub unit of this uh, non ideal second order effects clear. And again, when we reduce the thickness of the oxide, when we go for lower technologies, what happens is that there, there happens to be some sort of leakage. Okay. So we have two types of leakages. One is through the oxide. So which is, which we call it as a gate oxide leakage. And the other one is the junction leakage when there is a PN junction. So again, uh, there, there is some sort of current flow through those PN junction because of a very high electric field around them. Okay. And finally, we'll talk about this mobility and the threshold voltage variation with respect to the temperature. So these impacts can be observed not only for the shorter channel, but can be also observed for the longer channel as well. Okay. So uh, because generally the mobility uh, as well as the threshold voltage are susceptible to the variation in the temperature. Okay. So we will be discussing uh, some of the topic much more in depth, but there are a few topics we will not go much in depth, but rather something like a topic that we discuss for uh, diffusion capacity. So we will be just having a glimpse of it and will not go much in depth clear. Now today I'll just try to cover this velocity saturation effect. Okay. So before we discuss about this velocity saturation effect, I just want to derive the current equation of a longer channel. Okay. And then we'll just get into the velocity saturation effect and see how does this velocity saturation effect impact the current that flow between the source and the drain. When I have a channel length that is less than one micrometer clear. So I'm just going to talk about two things. One, I'm just going to call long channel for a length that is greater than one micrometer. Okay. So long channel transistor, if at all, if I'm saying, then I'm trying to specify that the length of the channel is more than one micrometer. Okay. If at all, if I'm try trying to say that I'm working on the shorter channel, it generally assumes that the length of the channel is less than one micrometer. Okay. So these are the two notations I will be using. So whenever I'm referring to longer channel, you can always assume that the length of the channel is much larger. Okay. And whenever I say it's a short channel, the length of the channel is less than one micrometer is the assumption that you have to hold. Okay. Now, whenever we go for shorter channel, we have all this uh, 10 effects that I have listed here. Okay. So let me derive each one of them. First, in order to talk about the first effect, which is nothing but the velocity saturation effect, I have to derive the current equation for the long channel. Okay. And then I will just get into the short channel current equation. Okay. How does this velocity saturation impact our current equation that we have been using for a longer channel? Clear? Now, before I proceed, I'll first brief about the theory behind this velocity saturation effect. Clear? Uh, let me give some sort of analogy. Say, for example, you have a bike which runs at a particular speed, a maximum speed. Okay. Uh, say, for example, uh, like 100 kilometers per hour, that is the maximum speed. But you, you try to accelerate more than that. It is something like you have an accelerator, right? So you try to, even though you, you try to push uh, your accelerator beyond the, the limit, 
what happens is that the bike will not go beyond a particular speed. The velocity of that particular bike gets saturated, okay, to 100 kilometers per hour. Okay, in the same similar way, the electrons that exist between the source and the drain across the channel will also have some sort of saturation. Okay, now we know from the classical theory. I, I guess you are familiar with the drift velocity, right? So VD here talks about what is known as a drift velocity. So what is the relation that I can specify between the drift velocity and the electric field? How, how do I relate both these quantities? You have a source in the drain, okay? And there is some sort of potential difference between the source and the drain. So which means that I have some positive voltage across the VDS, okay? And uh, this VDS, in short, creates an electric field between the source and the drain, okay? And let me call that electric field as EL, Okay, which is basically laterally there exists a horizontal field. Okay, so there exists a horizontal field, and due to which I'm calling that electric field as an EL. Okay, so now as I increase the value of this VDS, the field also increases, and due to which what happens is that the the charge carriers that I have, which is basically an electron, will try to run to the speed of the field. Okay, so this drift velocity can be related to the lateral electric field by the mobility of the carriers that I have. So in short, based on this classical theory, if at all, if I try to plot the electric field versus the drift velocity, you would find that the carriers will try to attain a specific drift velocity based on the electric field that it has here. And the, the slope of this particular graph would be equal to mu or mu n that I have written here. Okay, the higher the voltage that I give, the higher the electric field that exists, and due to which the free carriers will be drift through the source and the drain by a much higher drift velocity. Clear? So that is the relation that we have for a longer channel. Okay. Okay, so let me write this EL. How do I write this EL in terms of potential difference? The electric field in terms of VDS. How do I write that? Minus dou V by dou X. Yeah. So it would be. Okay. So this is what he's trying to say. And again, when we try to look, the X basically stands from here to here. The electric field exists from a length of zero all the way to a length of L. Okay. So due to which it becomes something like VDS by L. The electric field in short could be written as VDS by L. Okay, now once we start reducing the length of the channel, okay, whenever I'm trying to deal with a shorter channel, the length of this channel will become small, okay, and due to which the electric field will be very high even for a small value of VDS. Am I right? Even for a small value of VDS, what happens is that because the length of the channel is very short, the electric field shoots up to a very large value, okay, and as I said, there is something known as a critical electric field, okay, so. For even for small value of VDS, the electric field across the source and the drain reaches what is known as the critical electric field at which the drift velocity is no more given by this expression there, which is given as mu n times that of EL, but rather it would be equal to saturated velocity. Okay. The drift velocity will become saturated. Okay. And it never follows this relation, which is defined as mu n times that of EL, you know, and that is what we call it as a velocity saturation effect. Now, since because my drift velocity is shifted from being this expression to this expression, okay, we will find something different. Okay, so I'll talk about this uh, impact when we discuss about short channel effect probably in the next class. But today's class, let us assume that we are dealing with a longer channel, and I just want to show you the derivation of this longer channel current equation. Okay, and later we'll utilize this derivation of this long channel into the short channel discussion when we talk about the velocity saturation effect here. Pictorially, I can represent this impact by reaching a particular velocity, which we call it as a Vsat, okay, at which the EL becomes EC, that is the critical electric field. Once I cross this critical electric field, the velocity of our carrier becomes saturated, okay? The drift velocity becomes equal. Okay, and this is what we call it as a 
plus saturation effect. Okay, but today let, let me try to conclude the class not with the discussion of plus saturation effect, but for a long channel, how do we get the current equation? For the current discussion, let us assume that I am working in the deep triode region or deep linear region. Okay, so in this deep linear region, I'm going to assume that the value of VDS is closer to the value of zero, okay? Not exactly equal to zero, but let us assume that it is so small that it can be approximated to the value of zero, okay? So with that condition, let us try to evaluate the current that flows between the source and the drain. And we know that the current I can be returned as the moment of charge with respect to the time, right? So it can be returned as dq by dt. So charge across the channel divided by the time, okay? Now, let us evaluate each of these quantities individually, okay? We know this charge Q can be written as C times V, okay? Now, when I look across the capacitance that I have, it is the total gate capacitance that I have, okay? So it can be, the C quantity can be returned as something like COX, which has a unit of farad per meter square. So in order to get the total gate capacitance, I need to multiply the length and the width of the channel. So due to which I will have this as my total capacitance, gate capacitance. But what is the effective voltage that gets dropped across this channel? Is it VGS or is it something like VGC? In order to create the channel, I have to have a gate potential which is more than the value of VD. So which means that we have to offset this uh, particular threshold voltage. Okay, so due to which the effective voltage that appears across this channel would then be returned as VGC, okay? Gate to channel I'm writing, okay? Minus the offset voltage which is dvt okay so hope that you are clear with this the effective gate voltage that i have across this channel is not just vgc but it has been offset by the threshold voltage and due to which i write it as vgc minus vth okay now to create the channel i need a minimum of gate to a channel voltage which is equal to vt so that i'm offsetting it here okay so now let us talk about this vgc okay now this vgc can be written as vg minus vc right now what is our channel voltage this channel voltage is nothing but i can write it as the average between the source and the drain voltage okay so i'm just going to write this channel voltage as an average voltage between the source and the drain okay so vg minus vs plus vd times that of two now to this, I'm just going to add and subtract the source potential voltages, okay? So when I try to do, uh, what I can do is that you could see that there is a kind of quantities that you can combine, okay? So you have this quantity and also have uh, this quantity, okay? So both of these things you can combine and you can create what is known as VGS, okay? And then you, you are being left over with the other two quantities, which is VDS half, and this uh, Vs half, okay? So both of these quantities, you can write it as Vds by two, clear? So this Vgc can be returned as Vgs minus Vds by two, clear? So that concludes the channel charge. Now let us try to write this time, which is nothing but the transit time of your carriers between the source and the drain. Now this transit time can be derived from what we call it as a drift velocity, okay? So since the carriers are moving across a length of L with a speed of VD, I could write the transit time as L by VD, right? Now, again, we know that this drift velocity, since because we are dealing with the longer channel, I can use this classical formula of mobility times that of the lateral electric field. And again, we know that this lateral electric field can be returned as VDS divided by the length. Okay, so now that when I try to plug in all of these quantities, this drift velocity can be returned as something like nu n times that of Vds. And this L will go to the top. And what we have is something like L squared divided by mu, mu n times that of Vds. Okay, so now I'm just going to plug in all of these quantities for the expression of ideas. Okay, so our total ideas would then be returned as something like mu n COX W by L, okay, uh, because there is one L term that sits here. So we were canceling one of the L's due to which we will end up having just W by L here. And then our VGS 
minus VDS by 2 minus VDH into there is one VDS that is coming here and that I will write it here. Okay, So this is the total expression that we have. And this is the current equation in the linear region. Now, in order to evaluate the current equation in the saturation region, we know that uh, when the value of VDS is equal to VDS sat and that voltage for a longer channel can be returned as VGS minus VT, then this whole of this IDS can be returned as saturation current to be equal to mu n COX by 2 into to this VGS minus VT the whole square. Okay, so this is the current equation for the saturation region and this is the current equation for the linear region. Okay, so with this discussion, I'll just stop here. And these are the current equations for the longer channel. Okay, so in the next class, I will discuss about how does this current equation gets modified, particularly the saturation current equation modifies due to this velocity saturation effect. Okay, so we'll talk about this. How does this current equation gets modified when I have this velocity saturation effect in the next class? Okay, so I'll just stop here.